Why are short options better than long options, in my opinion? Why do I primarily sell options rather than buy options? Like if, if I was going to put on a bullish trade, especially newer traders often play everything to the upside. Everybody's bullish on everything, right? Why, if I was a bullish player, would I prefer to sell puts rather than buy calls? So let me go over to my trading platform. I'm going to pick a stock I don't currently have a position open on. It doesn't look like I have a position in Google right now. So let's go to the Google options chain. I'll go to the 52 DTE option cycle. And what I'm going to do uh, just for purposes of comparing the two, I'm going to choose the same strike short put versus the same strike long call. Yeah, that way, uh, you know, you would think they would have about the same win rate, right? Because a 23 delta short put in this case is the one I would choose, the 140 strike here. 23 deltas, you'd expect it to win about 77% of the time. That is the pop, right? The probability of profit here. So 23 deltas, 77% of the time I should win on that short put. But if I do the 140 long call instead of the short put, it's a 74 delta, right? So you'd think well, probability of profit should be around 74%, but actually probability of profit, it's only about 40 percent on that long call why are the probabilities so weird you know the short puts everything seems all right but the long calls right that uh, seems a little different what is the difference between the two why why is that long call being punished well there's a couple of things you need to know about long options versus short options anytime you buy an option right you have to pay a debit right when you buy something obviously you have to pay for it you have to pay a debit to purchase something so when i buy this call the 74 delta call i have to pay 1530 debit for that call which means i have to shell out of my pocket right it comes out of my my net liquidity value right now i lose 1530 dollars right i have to pay for that call 1530 dollars and i have to have it move in a significant way kind of quickly to make up the difference and th that debit that i had to pay where the short put obviously I'm receiving a credit. When I sell an option, I receive a credit rather than have to pay a debit. In this case, that same strike short put, I received $254 for selling that put. So that gives me a cushion on the short put that I don't have on the long call, right? So if we actually take a look at the risk profile, let's take a look at the analyze tab here. So if I zoom in a little bit on the short put, so if I sell the 140, short put here google's currently trading around 152 right as long as google stays above 140 my short put finishes out of the money and i should be good well google actually could drop a little bit below 140 and i would still be good because even if this option finishes in the money because i received 250 dollars up front uh, as a credit for selling that put you know as long as i don't lose more than 250 dollars you know to the downside so even if google drops you know another two dollars and fifty cents to the downside i still break even so i actually don't lose money unless google finishes at expiration below 137.50 essentially so the short options they have a little bit of a cushion they have some runway at the end right they help you know offset that potential loss where it's exactly the opposite with a long option. So if I buy that call, you're going to see that I don't have any runway, you know, to the downside. As a matter of fact, I don't have really any runway to the upside. I actually I have to make up that $1,530 debit that I have to pay. So really, you know, I, I get to see this thing move where the short option, I really don't need the underlying to move at all. But the real damaging thing to long options is their extrinsic value. So what is extrinsic value? Well, options have both intrinsic value and extrinsic value. The intrinsic value is the real value. It's the real world value of that option if it were exercised right this second. So what intrinsic value is, if I go back to the trading platform, what is Google trading at? It's trading at, we'll, we'll say 152 for the price. And we bought the 140 call. So what's the intrinsic value? Well, it's 140, the difference between 140 and 152, we'll call it $12. So that option's intrinsic value, it's real value if it were exercised right now is $12, but it's trading for 15, 25, 15, 30. It's fluctuating around, the markets are open. That means there's 300 and some odd dollars of extra value 
tied to that option. I had to pay an extra 300 and something dollars to purchase that option. Well, what's that value? That's the extrinsic value. So that's not the real value. That's not that actual intrinsic worth of that option. It's the extrinsic value, which is mostly made up of time value. It's the time value baked into that 52 DTE option. It's 52 days essentially worth of time that's baked into that option that will slowly every day come out of that option. So as every day passes, the extrinsic value gets less and less until we get to expiration and there will be no extrinsic value left in that option. The only value at expiration is the intrinsic value. And this is the reason why it's almost always preferable to sell options rather than buy options because if you buy an option, you don't want to have the option lose value every day due to time, right? You want your option value to increase, right? Because when you buy something, you want to buy low and sell high. Well, in this case, you're buying something and every day due to the passage of time, it's losing some time value. So for your long option to make up for that everyday time value that's coming out, right? You, you need to be right on direction. When you buy a call, you need this thing to actually go up and it doesn't need to go up slowly. It needs to go up in a hurry because again, theta is eating away at your option. That time value, which we call theta, that theta decay is killing your option every day. So you can't have Google, you know, go up 25 cents tomorrow and then, you know, 50 cents the next day and then 30 cents the next day, you know, that's too slow of a movement. It's not going to make up for the time value that's lost. You need Google to really make some movement very quickly to overcome that theta decay. And most of the time, stocks don't do that. They're not going to move in a quick enough fashion in your direction to overcome that theta decay. That's why, you know, long options, they're really they're punished by theta. And short options obviously are on the other side of the trade. Short options are greatly helped by theta. If I have a short option, I don't need it to move at all, right? If I go back here and delete the long call and we put on the short put, I don't need the short put to move at all, right? Every day, value is coming out of that option, that extrinsic value, which is mostly the time value, you know, right? That time value every day, every day a day passes theta, theta comes out. Theta decay, theta decay, theta decay. And obviously, since I sold the option rather than buy it, you know, what I wanted to do was I wanted to sell something high and I want to buy it back to close at a lower price. So every day that that option is losing value, that's a good thing if I'm a short options trader. I don't need the underlying to move if I'm a short options trader. I don't need this thing to go up. It's a bullish trade, a short put. I don't need this to go up. It can go up, that's fine. It can go down, that's fine. As long as it doesn't go down below 140, I'm good, really. Uh, as long as it doesn't go down below 137.50 even, I'm good. And of course, if it just trades sideways, it doesn't really, if it doesn't move an inch from now, you know, for the next 52 days, I'm good because I'm still going to make all of my money just from theta, just from that passage of time. Every day that passes, you know, that is the sure thing with options, you know, with Long options versus short options, there's other factors to be considered. Volatility is a factor. For example, if volatility increases, you know, my short put would be punished where my long call in this case would actually be benefited by that. But here's the thing. You don't know if volatility is going to expand in the next 52 days. You don't know if it's going to contract in the next 52 days. You don't know if the underlying is going to go up. You don't know if the underlying is going to go down. You can't predict those things. What you can predict is that tomorrow will always come. You can always bet on the passage of time. You can't stop that passage of time. You can't stop that theta decay. And really just to drive this point home, I also want to show you how the passage of time, you know, the closer expiration gets, how your long options are greatly punished and how your short options actually benefit. So if I go back to the analysis tab here, so what I'm gonna do is, you know, this graph here in the analysis tab, it, the, this is the PNL if these price swings happen today. So in today's date is on the calendar, but let me move out a little bit in time. Let me go out instead of 52 DTE, let's go out to 21 DTE. So this would be where we typically manage our trade or roll it, you know, whatever it happens to be, we take it off for a winner or even just accept a loss. I'm going to go out, you know, that would be you know, after 31 days have passed. Now, where are my break evens? Well, this orange line is the T0 line. Imagine we go forward 31 days. I'm actually still profitable on this trade this, because I don't really start losing money with the T0 line until 
Google drops all the way to about $144.80 or so. You know, this line here, this T0 line, that's the theoretical PNL at that point. So, you know, again, Google can drop on a short option, you know, on a short put, and it won't hurt me. The passage of time offsets that loss. But what if instead of the short put, this was a long call? It's going to be, as you can imagine, probably exactly the opposite, right? If I go, well, we've already there, so we're already looking at 31 days into the future, right? At the 21 DTE mark. So if we look at the orange line, the theoretical PNL, you know, I'm, I'm not breaking even now until somewhere around 154. Google needs to be trading at 154. It's currently trading at 151.66. So not only, you know, do I need for this thing to be trading higher than it is now, I actually need it to be trading con considerably, you know, like three or four dollars higher than it is now. If I'm still in this position 21 days from now, just because I need the, the price, I need the delta, that delta move to offset what I'm losing due to theta, due to the passage of time. And again, this is just, it's one of those things, you know, you don't have to go through this, you know, and analyze it the way I did. Just mentally always know theta. Time decay, right? Time decay punishes your long options. Now, does this mean that I never buy long options? No, I, I will sometimes buy long options, but if I buy a long option, I usually have a reason to do so, and it it's usually not something that's affected by theta. For example, if I you know, have a really long-term outlook on a particular stock, I might buy a long call on it. You know, I might go out to the next leaps contract, which is an option that's typically January every year. So I might go to January of next year and purchase a long call on something. An option with that much time value with a year or two years or more of time value baked into it, theta is really slow working against that option, right? Because theta ramps up the closer you get to expiration. So if I buy something a year out, it makes sense because theta is not going to really punish me. And I have a lot of time for hopefully that underlying stock to make that big move in my direction to overcome, you know, what I would have lost a theta at that point. But in most normal kind of option cycle ranges, like if you're doing, say, three months or less, theta is an issue. Theta is a serious issue. 99 times out of 100, if it's a choice between a short put and a long call, if I'm three months or less, I'm always, almost always going to choose the short put over the long call because, again, you just can't get over that theta decay. Peace, guys.